I have with me uh, a guest today that basically I feel like I'm talking to to make my grandmother happy. I, uh, as a kid of the 60s and 70s, I grew up on Billy Graham. And, uh, and as we fast forward to the times that we're in now, um, the, the Billy Graham ministry has never been more important for first responders in this country. And if you are a first responder or first responder family, um, you know how difficult things are and you know how difficult very often, not just our professional lives can be, but our personal lives can be. So I wanted to bring to you a man who can really talk about some solutions to some of those issues that law enforcement and other for, uh, first responders deal with. Plus, he's a retired cop. Jason Scalzi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Betsy. It's great to be here. So um, first, but well, before, because I have to do this, before we talk about what you're doing now, uh, I'm going to ask you the question I ask every fellow retired cop. Why'd you become a cop, Jason? Yeah. Great, great question. Uh, I was retired. Uh, I was uh, raised in a Christian home, always had the, a desire to serve others. Right out of high school, I went to Honduras on a missionary trip, a short trip. Then I joined the Marine Corps. I, I served in the Marine Corps for four years. Never thought uh, uh, to become a police officer. I was going to college and a friend of mine said, hey, uh, you got veterans preference. Why don't you join uh, the law, uh, police department? And uh, so that was back in uh, 1998. And I uh, went through two police academies back to back, uh, about 37 weeks. Never prepares you uh, for what uh, uh, the streets will, uh, uh, what will happen on the streets. But I, I wanted to serve and I wanted to, uh, to be used uh, to help other people. I love that. So now you're the National Law Enforcement Deployment Manager for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. So that's quite a title. Um, and you guys do some amazing, amazing work. You're, you're helping uh, with chaplaincy programs. You're reaching out to first responders literally in the middle of critical incidents. You're also helping with uh, law enforcement marriages and retreats and things like that. So let's talk about chaplaincy first, because quite frankly, we're at a time now in this nation where very often religion, especially Christianity, is getting pushed out of government, right? And cops were government. Um, and that's a really, really horrible idea. Talk about how uh, the Billy Graham organization is dealing with that. Yes, yes. Um, well, Reverend Franklin Graham was uh, up in New York City uh, on 9-11 and was walking around in the scripture, the theme scripture of the rapid response team is Matthew 9-36, where it says, when he saw the crowds, he was moved. He had compassion because people were walking around helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. And uh, and so that's where uh, the rapid response team uh, vision and dream came about. And so right now we have over 2,000 chaplains uh, in the United States that are crisis trained chaplains that deploy to natural and man-made disasters. Remember in uh, 2014 when Ferguson happened, that's really when the civil unrest, that's really when the beginning of the law enforcement ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic uh, Association started. Uh, they, they needed to have chaplains who understood the police culture. Well, myself and another uh, officer from Vineland, uh, New Jersey, uh, Baron McCoy, who has since uh, passed away, uh, the two of us with three of our chaplains deployed down to Ferguson. And they saw how we were interacting with the uh, with the community, with the gang members, and also with the police. And then you remember uh, Freddie Gray was killed in Baltimore a, about a year later, and the riots took place down in Baltimore on Monday morning. Tuesday morning, uh, me and Baron McCoy were right out at North and Pennsylvania Avenue and uh, just providing emotional, spiritual support. Obviously, we weren't advertising that we were police officers, but we were chaplains. But we were able to communicate with the uh, with the police and. Uh, and then I was also in uh, in Baton Rouge the day the officers were shot and killed. So that's when the law enforcement ministry, when the leadership of the uh, BGEA saw that they uh, need to have a ministry to support and provide emotional, spiritual support and strengthening the spiritual fitness of officers and their families. And uh, we can talk about uh, the four scopes of ministry uh, that we do. And I think that's so important. And I want to talk about that because... You know, again, we're at a time now in 2024 where 
law enforcement has been so demonized and so vilified and and the vast majority of police officers out there on the job are are just like you and me raised in homes where they learned that uh you know a life of service would be a good life to have and uh and we all we all come into it a little naive thinking oh gosh you know people are going to embrace me because i'm just here to serve my community and now we have people doing that people that have been on the job a long time and young people that are new on the job and they're finding out out that not everyone is embracing them so how do you deal with all of that how do you help those cops out there who just want to serve yeah when we go uh, to these police expos and these police and chiefs conference, and there's wonderful uh, things out there and tools to help officers survive on the street, you know, when it comes to their physical well being and unarmed defense, and all those things are very important to save officers' lives. But the spiritual aspect is neglected. We're created in the image of God, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And unless we deal with the things of the spirit, you know, I tell people all the time that you can't arrest yourselves out of problems. You know, you, how many times you know, you've been on the job, you, you've locked the father up, you've locked the son up, you locked the grandchild up. And it's like a, the recidivism is just over and over again. Unless there's a change of heart, unless somebody has a, a, a an encounter with God, because uh, the Bible says that uh, that our heart is deceitfully wicked. And when law enforcement officers see the wickedness uh, and, it, and it does affect officers. So so we uh, with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, we focus on the spiritual aspect. We do that through our law enforcement appreciation retreats. We do these retreats across the nation. Uh, we were just in Chicago at the Lincolnshire Marriott Resort back in April. Uh, we're going to be in uh, Portland in August. Uh, we were in Seattle last year. We'll be in Southern California at the end of the year. And uh, these are just uh, an opportunity for law enforcement officers to come and be in a safe environment. We cover everything. We cover the resort. We cover the food. We have amazing music. We have uh, speakers that are either active or retired police officers that bring a positive uh, faith message to really encourage the uh, officers. Uh, that's just one aspect that we do. Uh, we also have our critical incident response. You heard me uh, mention a little bit about uh, deploying to uh, civil unrest to Ferguson and Baltimore. We have over 300 chaplains that are either active or retired police officers. And it's so important to have chaplains who understand the police culture. And uh, so we deploy upon request when, uh, when needed to mass shootings across the United States to officers killed in the line of duty. And uh, we are there to provide emotional, spiritual support. The rapid response team of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association trains and deploys um, chaplains to provide emotional, spiritual support to people who are in crisis. And we're seeing that across the nation. And uh, it's a blessing that we have the ability and the resources to do that. Talk about the requirements for being yeah. one of your chaplains and and what some of that training is. Because, I, you know... I, as a Christian, you know, I, I think about all the biblical principles that, of course, need to be yeah. applied. But but a couple of things. First of all, cops, you know, generally see nothing but evil, right? Evil, evil, evil. And we get pretty cynical. Also, how do you deal with non-Christian police officers on a spiritual level? Yeah, there's a couple of great uh examples that just recently uh, happened uh, yesterday for example i'm speaking with a an officer from uh, the north jersey area and uh, he's getting ready to retire and he's like uh you know he wants to serve you know what people want to know that they have uh a, an identity outside of law enforcement and once they retire what can i do so I'll, i explained to him about the the rapid response team and and uh Talk to them about the sharing hope and crisis. So the requirements to be a, a rapid response team is do, either doing the sharing hope and crisis seminar, which uh, we'll give you the, the link to that website, and also the LECTP, which stands for Law Enforcement Chaplain Training Program. And we provide this training across the nation at different locations. So those are the requirements uh, to do that training. Then there's a background. And then there's also because it's the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, we want to make sure that that the chaplain is born again and that they can share their faith. So I'm sharing this with one of the officers. And when I talked about being born again, he didn't know what I meant. So that gave me an opportunity to share with him the story of Jesus and Nicodemus in John chapter three and just had a, an emotional 
encounter. He had a, an encounter with the Lord. So that was pretty, pretty awesome. So when we're dealing with officers who aren't believers, you know, uh, we're able to connect with them because we know the language, we we know the, the culture of the police department, and we look for opportunities. Our number one goal is to provide emotional, spiritual support when they're going through trauma. We're not there to hit them over the head with the Bible, but we're there to love them and to uh, let them know that God loves them as well. See, and, and I think that, again, from a law enforcement perspective, we do get cynical. You know, we start to think there is no... There is no good in the world. And there is, I've heard a lot of cops say uh, there can't be a God because why would God allow all these horrible things to happen to children, to old people, to, to just random families driving down the roadway? How do you talk to officers about that? Yeah, well, evil happens. We know that there's evil in the world. There's good and there's evil. And I remind them that that the heart of man is deceitfully wicked, uh, the proverb says. And unless there is a change of heart, you know, um, bad things happen uh, to good people all the time. And, and in fact, um, my 22-year-old son passed away two years ago. And if it wasn't for my faith in Christ, if it wasn't for, you know, knowing and having the confidence and the assurance of the resurrection because of what Christ did on Calvary, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I'm able to, when the opportunity arises, to share of the, the grief and the trauma that I've gone through and that with God's help, we, we can uh, get through these difficult times. I was just on the phone with an uh, uh, officer who, 31 years on the job, reached out to us and, and uh, going through uh, depression and difficult times. And I was able to, to uh, share uh, some of my uh, experiences and share what God has done in my life and, and uh, prayed with him on the phone and just to be able to see the transformation. And he, in fact, said that he's going to be coming to our retreat in, uh, in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm looking forward to, to meeting these, uh, this officer. So, you know, there are officers that are really going through difficult times, uh, either, you know, on the job or in their marriage. And we have some other things that uh, resources that we have for married couples as well. You know, that's one of the things when it, you and I are, are two different generations of cops. When I went to the police academy, I started in 1981. Um, we were told, don't take it home to your family. Don't talk about it. All these things. They didn't say much in the academy to prepare us for that. Now you went in the 90s and it started to change a little, uh, but but not a lot. And now we see this explosion of mental health crises when it comes to uh, police officers. We die two and a half times uh, more by our own hand than we do by felonious assaults. How is um, the Billy Graham organization helping you guys to deal with that? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, just this morning, I had a conversation with that officer and I, and I told him, you know, um, that, the answer is not on your hip. You know, when I was going through a separation in my marriage, when I was going through uh, the death of my, uh, my son was dealing with mental illness and addiction, I locked my weapons up, you know, because that was not a priority right now. My priority was reconciliation. My priority was getting the counsel and the healing that we need. You know, we walk around with this image armor that we have it all together. And uh, we, we've been around long enough that we know if an officer seems like they have it all together, they, they really don't. And they need to deal with uh, that, that, trauma and that grief and that only comes through being able to to ventilate and and validate getting those uh that trauma off of their uh their shoulders uh, or out of their dumping that bucket and uh with christ uh it's so important so i was able to encourage this officer you know to call me uh all the any time and we are all of our chapters are available 24 hours a, a day in fact we have a 24-hour prayer hotline that we give out to uh to all of our uh, officers that we come in contact with, that they can call for prayer. We're available for them. So uh, we we train and we teach officers and chaplains not to shy away from those tough questions. Are you thinking about committing suicide? How? And and then dealing with that. And we and we also understand that that there's the spiritual, but there's also the clinical. And that's the wonderful aspect of the sharing hope in crisis and the LACTP. We, we do both. We talk about the clinical, we talk about the spiritual, and uh, we don't uh, neglect neither one of them. So we also know when there's a, a time where we need to make that referral. I want to dig into that a little more because that's, that's one of the things my own pastor talks about 
you can't pray your way out of depression, right? Yeah, there, the, right. And there's some people who say, oh yeah, you just want me to buy into this religious garbage mm -hmm. and, uh, and you don't really want to deal with my true depression. I know that, that you guys look at both. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the sharing hope and crisis, which is available on demand as well. I believe the website is, uh, is being, uh, uh, redone, but uh, you can take that on demand or you can take that in one of our uh, locations. But uh, we really uh, talk about the trauma. We talk about the uh, the places of grief uh, and, and that they can go come and go. And I know personal experience, you know, for the longest time, I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't need a counselor until uh, my wife packed the house up and drove off. And then I was like, okay, I need a counselor, you know? <laughs> so don't wait until your spouse drives off. Don't wait until you know, uh, your house is fully engulfed uh, to get help. It's okay to say, I need help. It's okay not to be okay. So uh, when it comes to that, that clinical aspect, uh, we have chaplains that are, that are counselors and, and, uh, and we are also okay within ourselves to say, you know, yeah, we'll pray for you, but there is somebody else that you may need to talk to. That, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, one of the things that I know you guys have been doing is trying to provide support at the southern border. Talk about what you guys are doing. Yes, yes. So, uh, Frank, uh, Reverend Franklin Graham, uh, just recently, this past February, uh, was on the uh, God Loves You tour, and he visited ten border cities, all the way from Brownsville, Texas, all the way over to Chula Vista. And about two weeks prior, myself and another. Uh, a retired officer. I went down and just uh, spent time just uh, going to a lot of the uh, border police departments, the border patrol uh, agents, and just to share with them the resources that we have, the law enforcement appreciation retreats, letting them know uh, that they are loved, that they're cared for, uh, uh, giving them uh, the resources that they need, connecting with the local church. You know, it's always the, the local church because uh, these uh, festivals and these events that uh, Ever since uh, Dr. Billy Graham uh, did the Crusades, it was the local church that would follow up. So I just had another conversation with a, one of our chaplains who's actually down there right now following up with the local churches and, and the Border Patrol uh, agents with doing this uh, Sharing Hope in Crisis seminar. So, so these are just some of the free resources that, that the ministry is, is providing, not only the law enforcement, but also the community to minister to others in the community. So... Well, we're not done uh, at the Border Patrol. Uh, I'm in contact with these uh, Border Patrol agents and chaplains uh, all the time. Tucson, I'm dear friends with a police officer who's a chaplain there. We're in contact all the time. We'll be back out in November doing an LECTP training in Tucson. So we're, we're still focused on these borders uh, because there is a great need. Um, what, losing one officer to suicide is too many. And unfortunately, they're happening more and more. So we want to... Uh, do everything possible to reach them uh, so that uh, they can continue to serve in their communities because we need them on the front lines. What do you see when you're dealing with um, the kids of police officers? Because yeah. that's that's kind of, a, you know, we talk a lot about spouses, but also yeah. being a cop's kid is, as Mike Four will tell you, not the not the, not always the most fun thing. Well, it's, that's, a, that's a ministry that really needs because I, uh, 22 years, 21 years as a police officer. My last eight years was community policing, <clears throat> serving in the church as a deacon, as an elder. Uh, my kids uh, suffered the most, you know, because I'm serving everybody else and, and not serving them. So for those that are watching this, you know, it's the ministry. Yeah, we're in ministry. If you're in law enforcement, you're in the ministry, you're serving, you know, but it should be God, your family, well, God, your spouse, your family, and then everything else. And I had things out of line for, for a long time. So to answer your question, do we have anything specific for uh, for children other than when we deploy to critical incidents, we're always trying to reach out and to encourage the the officer and their families, you know, to, to have that strong family unit because it's so important. What do you see as the future of this ministry? Yeah. What do you see? Because again, I think the tide's starting to turn, right? I hope that you're seeing that, that that community support, yeah. especially through churches, um, is really making a big comeback. Yeah. Community support for law enforcement. Um, you're, but your boots on the ground. What do you see and what do you see as the future? Yeah, about a year and a half ago, um, the Charlotte-Mecklenburg police uh, were based out of Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. 
uh, had a, an officer died um, from sickness. They had a police suicide. And uh, from that moment on, we got connected with a core of, of uh, police officers who were strong followers of Christ and started a prayer group called Operation Hornets Nest Prayer Team, which was pretty amazing. And uh, the first Wednesday of every month, we were coming together praying. And um, we, uh, like, like you said, I get to go all over. It was just in Chicago, Portland, uh, Southern Jersey. And we're finding Christians uh, within law enforcement agencies who understand that they are called by God. And so we're seeing revival breaking out amongst uh, uh, police departments and among police officers. So where do I see the future? Thank God for the leadership of uh, Dr. Billy Graham over 70 years of ministry, the integrity of the ministry, the, the faithful donors of the ministry that we're able to do all these uh, retreats. Uh, I didn't even talk about Alaska yet, but uh, we're able to do all these things absolutely free, no charge for the communities, no charge for the police department. So I believe that this ministry is uh, many, many, many years of faithful service, and uh, it's a blessing to serve with uh, this organization. Jason, if people want their church to get involved, yeah. if they, uh, if if a police officer is watching right now and and wants to get involved, um, where can people find you, the ministry, and of course, where can they donate? Yeah, you can go to uh, uh, billygram.org uh, forward slash n l e m, which stands for law enforcement. Uh, ministry, National Law Enforcement Ministry. So that's billygram.org forward slash N-L-E-M. You can email us at National Law Enforcement Ministry at BGEA.org, National Law Enforcement Ministry at BGEA.org. And of course, you can reach out to me. I uh, would love to, to talk with you more and share with you about the ministry and, and, uh, and how uh, you can be a part of the team. Jason, I got to tell you, I think you just gave us all a whole lot of hope. And I hope yeah. that that people uh, reach out. I hope that people take advantage. And I hope that people support you because people watching this show support the American law enforcement officer. <clears throat> and this is another great way to do it. And if you'd like more information about the National Police Association, visit us at nationalpolice.org. Are you passionate about supporting law enforcement? The National Police Association is on a mission to strengthen our communities, protect our families, and ensure justice prevails. But they need your help. Every dollar you donate makes a difference. It funds the legal defense of police officers and police agencies, supports advocacy for pro-law enforcement legislation, and funds community outreach programs and education. Imagine safer streets, stronger bonds between officers and neighborhoods, and a brighter future for all. Join us. Visit our website at nationalpolice.org to donate today.